When Kilauea Iki erupted from vents on Pu'upua'i in November of 1959, several feet of hot ash and cinder-sized pieces of pumice fell on the lush fern forest downwind. Devastation Trail follows the edge of this inundation, linking the Kilauea Iki Overlook parking lot with another parking lot at the intersection of Crater Rim Drive and Chain of Craters Road in a wonderful and interesting approximately three-quarter of a mile hike. During the eruption, fire fountains of molten lava shot up as high as 1,900 feet tall from the eruptive rifts. For a sense of scale, the world's tallest building, the Taipei 101, which is 101 stories tall and 1,667 feet high, would be dwarfed by these fire fountains. These immense fountains spread ash, pumice, and splatter all around the area, as well as fed liquid lava to the lava pond within Kilauea Iki Crater. The spatter was hot and plastic enough to weld together into the splatter cones you see at Pu'upua'i. However, the tephra and ash pumice spread out and fell downwind, depositing an immensely thick blanket when the eruption column collapsed between fountains. Pumice results when there's a lot of gas and water dissolved in the liquid lava. As the lava is erupted, pressure is released, the melt begins to cool quickly, and the gas is rapidly exsolved from the liquid lava, much the way carbon dioxide is exsolved as a bubbly froth when you shake a can of soda pop. The splatter and lava in the ponds cool quickly enough for all the gases to escape, and the resultant rock is very dense when it finally solidifies. The pumice, however, chills so rapidly it forms a glass-like, frothy substance because of the trapped bubbles. This is why pumice has a low enough density to float on water. This was the type of pumice that buried the lush forest which is preserved intact on the eastern side of Devastation Trail. On the west side of the trail is the sterile, moonlight, devastation surface of pumice. A few ohia trees, dead and bleached, still poke up through the pumice, and there are numerous tree molds along the trail. Very gradually, some ohia, ohelo, and ferns are beginning to recolonize this otherwise dead zone. So as you gaze out on this wasteland, Devastation Trail becomes an eerie reminder of Pele's power.